Hi everyone, my name is Richie Averill, your Mic Drop host, and welcome back to our Divorce Series. If you have not watched the first few video videos in this series, you can click the link in the description box below and start from the beginning. Today I'm joined by the one and only Tim Lasik. Tim, thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having me again. So we're going to continue our discussion about divorce and how that impacts real estate. Great. So as a realtor, what are some things I can do to help my clients stay in their marital home? Number one is, uh, most important is talk to a lender. Even if the home's free and clear or they're not considering okay. doing anything with the mortgage, it's important to talk with the mortgage lender just to know what the financial repercussions are now or down the road of them keeping the home or trying to qualify for a loan against the home or trying to even achieve financing on um, at a later date and time, rather. Okay. And how can realtors better assist clients that either are in the process of going through a divorce or are thinking about possibly getting a divorce? Uh, assemble a team. It's all about having a team and having dedicated professionals that are truly experts in their arena. Um, it allows you to focus on the real estate side of it. And you know you have a lender that specializes in divorce. They can focus on the financing side of it. You have other team members in your cabinet that are going to be ones that will advocate for that client to make sure that they're well protected in one of the most strenuous mm -hmm. emotional things that they'll ever experience in their life. Yeah. I like that. Make sure that you have a team in place. Yes. Right? So <clears throat> what are some common challenges that uh, a realtor could face when their client who is going through a divorce needs to get a mortgage? Um, some of the common challenges Number one is, is there any title surprises? Oftentimes, somebody could take out a home equity line of credit in their name only. Mm. The lien gets secured against the property, yeah. and the spouse might not even know about it. So number one is get that title policy. Take a look at that. Um, you know, Obviously, also invest the time in knowing wh where the house value is. You know, It's important to know where the value is, what expected costs are going to be in the future with the home. Um, you know, are utility items, not re sorry, not utilities, but, um, you know, HVAC items, right. could potentially those need to be repaired, roof, those mm -hmm. kind of things. You know, evaluating those, then working those items into what the value of the home is, what expected equity could be paid out, all drives in how to protect the client. Okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pin you down with one thing. What is one thing a realtor needs to be mindful of when they're working with a client that's going through divorce and needing to get a home? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> the one thing, um, I would say, honestly, the number one thing is to make sure that you're advocating for your client in their best interest. And that sometimes might be, it's not right to buy a home yet. It might be that it's okay to go ahead and rent for the six months that it is building up to the finalization of the divorce. Mm -hmm. So many things can take place in the divorce and uh, especially when you're talking finances and settlement of different assets, sometimes it's just better to put the brakes on for a moment mm -hmm. and then come back to the table, um, ultimately satisfying that client with even a better opportunity than trying to kind of cram it in within the 30 days that they're trying to get out of the house or something. And Tim, I know you are an expert in this arena. so. What advantage do you and other um, lenders that are experts in this arena, what advantage do you have over just a traditional lender that's not an expert? Those that, of us that have decided to take this niche market and put our efforts into it have taken the time to research guidelines, have taken the time to um, become educated, to become either certified or have a designation that really designates or can educate us to what, for certain things that we need to watch out for in a transaction. Mm -hmm. What that means is that we have seen scenarios or we have a better, a, a clearer ability to structure a mortgage or structure a person's financial situation where as they go into the divorce arena and they are in the negotiation process, we do have the ability to say, well, this is what's going to actually be good or bad about mm -hmm. you doing something like that. Um, it's more not just taking an application. It's also knowing on the back end, if you do this now, what could happen years forward or what could potentially do at, at current be a risk for the home, the marital home that could potentially get lost. Could be lost. And 
this to me seems a little bit like a no-brainer, but I want to hear your take on it. Why is it so important for realtors to become educated and accredited before working with divorcing buyers? I think it's important to be, maybe not so much the accreditation, but definitely become a, a, a subject matter expert. Knowing the, the perils that exist with keeping the home, the legalities and the technicalities that a realtor experiences when representing two divorcing couples, but it's their home, then they will understand all the technicalities that come later with the financing side of it and why there might be a, a waiting period to be able to get certain finance requirements established or clear before you can complete the, right. the financing. And ultimately, it puts you into a niche market. Nobody um, said that marriage is forever, right? right. <laughs> well, I'm sure someone did yeah. at one point. Yes. yes. Um, but there you have it. You know, great information on why you should become educated as a realtor uh, and assemble that team when you're working with a client that is going through a divorce. If you've not done it before, um, it is unlike any other transaction I've ever worked on. So you definitely want to make sure that you're ed educated. So thanks again, Tim, for joining us and giving us some great information. Thank you. And we'll see you next time on Mic Drops.